I know you may have heard of the Wakanda One City of Return. Yes, uh, put it up as a comment. Let me know where you heard it from. Was it from my channel or any other source? Please put it up as a comment. Definitely, you may also know of the Wakanda One City of Return Trade Expo organized by ADDI championed by Dr. Arikana Chambori Kwao. Yeah, so ADDI, African Diaspora Development Institute, is organizing an expo here in my city, Cape Coast. I told you that my city is, you know, getting up on the map. Yes, beautiful. So this project is basically to bridge Africans from the diaspora to Africans and the motherland to trade share ideas build partnerships and businesses yeah so this project started on the 2nd of december and it's going to end on the 13th of december now it's happening here in cape coast on monday there was the opening ceremony and the whole place was full your majesty nana okay your excellency dr arana shahambori before professor Lamula, dignitaries and distinguished guests, good afternoon. It is with immense pleasure that I stand before you today on behalf of the National Bar Association, where I serve as the 79th president. I bring you greetings from Jackson, Mississippi, in the United States of America, and I bring you greetings from each of the 67,000 black lawyers and judges that I have the privilege of leading as the president of the National Bar Association. We are so privileged to be with you on today. It is my distinguished honor and privilege to deliver these remarks. First, I wish to thank Her Excellency, Dr. Chambori Foy, for hosting the African Diaspora Development Institute and the entire team for organizing, for organizing the home of the Wakanda One City Return and Trade Expo. Congratulations, job well done. Thank you, program participants from across the globe. To our illustrious speakers and our moderator, also thank you. As you know, ADDI was founded with the mission of being the bridge between the African diaspora and the African continent. More specifically, ADDI was born out of the desire to bring Africa to the world and the world to Africa. Countless African diaspora and friends of Africa are keen to engage in commerce in Africa but face challenges navigating the complexity of international business. The United Nations, through a resolution, has declared 2015 to 2014 the International Decade for People of African Descent. The second pillar of the International Decade is justice. Yes, justice is that second pillar. We, the children of Africa, must take what is rightly ours to ensure justice is served. Thurgood Marshall, the first black Supreme Court justice in America, once said, the legal system can force open doors Sometimes even knock down walls, but it cannot build bridges. That job belongs to you and me. Your country can't do it. Afro and white, rich and poor, educated and illiterate, our fates are bound together. We can run from each other, but we cannot escape each other. With this in mind, I have established a foreign policy team to ensure the National Bar Association also addresses global legal challenges and initiatives such as reparations, both domestically and internationally. <laughs> and foreign direct investment opportunities. As her agency told you, I brought a delegation here with me. I'm joined here. Um, this week by my chief foreign policy advisor. She is not in the room, but Joanna LeBlanc is doing a great job. She was the one that introduced me to uh, the ambassador. And so she's my chief foreign policy advisor, uh, born uh, in Haiti. I have with me my chief economic advisor, who is one of the youngest of his uh, kind. He is in the private equity venture capital world, and that is uh, Kai Cunningham. I appreciate him being here with me. 
the Lord, who's my minority real estate developer, uh, was planning to be here with me. I've been in communication with him since I've arrived. He will be on the next trip. Uh, but he, as I said, the largest minority real estate developer in the USA. He is uh, legal and excited about coming on the next trip here and investing uh, in Ghana and across Africa. Uh, we have several attorneys that we brought with us that uh, have their own law firms. I see a few of them in the room. Uh, Henry Reeves out of the uh, city of Memphis, state of Tennessee, he's here with us. He's doing a great job there. He's looking to this as well. We brought Richard Lee from the state of Florida, as well as Marlon Porter from the state of Florida. They all got our own firms. I don't see them in the room right now. So we're happy for all of those that were able to join us. Um, <clears throat> the reality is that none of us are free until we are all fully liberated. The specific challenges of having African Americans and black immigrants in the United States are no different from the issues black people face in Africa, Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and across the world. As a judge and lawyer, I cannot express enough the significance of justice as one of the pillars of the decade. I fundamentally believe there is no justice without economic freedom. I said there is no justice without economic freedom. It is time for us, children of enslaved Africans, to stop looking at Africa through the humanitarian lens, but rather a viable place for investments. I've heard the ambassador say that time and time again, and true words have not been spoken. This is the continent of opportunity. This is the continent of opportunity. And you heard me mention reparations when I ran for president of the National Bar Association. One of the things I told them we would fight for was economic justice, economic empowerment, economic parity. Because in the United States for so long, we have focused on civil rights and social justice, but we have left out that key pillar of economic justice. And so in March of next year, I am convening in Houston, Texas, the first ever reparations summit sponsored by the National Bar Association. So we have domestic and international experts Houston, Texas, and we're going to be for two days and talk about reparations because it, after 402 years of not having reparations, it's far time for us to demand reparations. And I'm going out screw up here, but I have to tell you, whatever I go for, I intend to receive it. You know, in 2016, we challenged the governor of Mississippi. We had a state flag with a Confederate emblem what I consider to be the symbol of treason. So I filed a federal lawsuit against the governor, and we took it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Because we said that symbol of oppression should not be in the state flag that represents a state of what represent people that look like me. You have a symbol of treason, and I was not going to raise my daughter in a state that felt comfortable bearing that flag, that emblem. And so last year in 2020, the flag was finally changed. It was a collective effort, but after 126 years, the Mississippi flag does not bear the Confederate emblem. Somebody had to fight for decades. I had eight decades. The people that don't look like me, they wanted to still hold us in subjugation. They wanted to demand that we feel like second class citizens. But I'm going to tell you, I'm nobody's second class citizen. It's going to be a first class. I know that. And you're going to treat me with respect that God has put a name for me. And so that flag came down, but it had enough threats. It threatened my life, my wife's life, my staff's life. We just simply got security around the block. And we did what we had to do, but we were not turning back. So when you have a, some, a great mission in life, there will be challenges, but you do not allow that to turn you back. Because if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. I said I would have to say this. Just like some folks thought I was crazy for challenging the governor, that flag had stood for 120 years and people had tried before. It did not happen. But in due time, you will reap if you may not. We will get reparations, but we have to demand it. You can't be ashamed. And God gives you a platform for a reason. He gives you a platform for a reason. I appreciate what the ambassador is doing, bringing us across the country, across the world together. 
people from the African diaspora, because we have all gone through similar things, no matter what country we have been into. Been in. It's time to demand a change. And so after 400 years, I was saying, of slavery and oppression, it's time for us to get what's rightfully ours. Because of 400 years of slavery and oppression for black Americans in America, despite significant economic progress over the past decades, we face far worse economic conditions than whites of the general population. According to the Economic State of Black America in 2020, released by the United States Congress Joint Economic Committee, here are some daunting statistics. Historically, the unemployment rate for black Americans has been approximately twice the rate for whites that it takes even today. 6% for black workers and 3.1% for whites. The difference in the unemployment rates of blacks and whites shrink when you count, when you count for college graduates. However, even in the current strong economy, the unemployment rate is 50% higher for black Americans. The typical black households are a fraction of white households, just 59 cents for every dollar. The gap between black and white annual household incomes is about $29,000 per year. Black children are three times as likely to live in poverty as white children. And the median wealth of black families, $17,000, is less than one-tenth that of white families, $171,000. And so you see the fix of slavery still continues to this day. And that's why reparations is the great equalizer. That's why reparations is the great equalizer. And you have to have it. And it makes no sense. It infuriates me to know that the people that got reparations were the slaveholders. The slaveholders received reparations. Because we were allowed to be free, they got paid. But we did all the labor, and we still have not been paid. That is not justice. And there can be no reconciliation without atonement. You got to atone for the sins of the past. That is why we still have the conflict, because you have not done it the right way. You have to atone, and you have to pay for that debt. And the of these, Gaps, I applaud the United States House of Representatives for introducing H.R. 40 to form a commission to study and develop reparation proposals for African Americans Act. It's going to seek to examine slavery and discrimination in the colonies in the United States from 1619 to the present and recommend appropriate remedies. The chairperson of the House Committee is leading this effort is uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and we're going to be in her district when we have the reparation sign. And Houston. So she's going to host a hearing at our summit concerning reparations. So I invite any of you to join us March 23rd to 27th in Houston, Texas. We are going to have some type of hearing, some type of summit, and make a case for reparations. And I'm so proud, I took this point of personal privilege to know that we have a member of the National Bar Association in the White House as the first. African American, the first Asian American, the first woman Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. <laughs> it brought tears to my eyes when she recognized me when I ascended to the presidency. Uh, in July, she recognized me from the White House and was so happy to have her in the position that she's in. Unfortunately, Black Americans are the only group that has not received reparations for state sanction racial discrimination. While slavery afforded some white families the ability to accrue tremendous wealth, the people who work the labor have not been paid. Interestingly enough, Native Americans have received land and billions of dollars. The Japanese Americans received $1.5 billion after they were interned during World War II. In addition, the United States, through the Marshall Plan, helped to ensure that Jews received reparations for the Holocaust. In 1952, West Germany agreed to pay $3.5 billion. 3.45 billion Dutch marks to Holocaust survivors. I'd like to congratulate Namibia for securing roughly 1.35 billion from Germany as reparations for its role in the violent ethnic cleansing. I call on countries across Africa, Latin America, and Afro Blacks globally to demand reparations from countries such as France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Portugal. And the greatest colonizer of them all, some may say the most exclusive colonizer of them all, the United Kingdom. Yeah.
We have to demand reparations. In closing, I would just like to thank Her Excellency for galvanizing the fast work. I leave you with this quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Justice too long delayed is justice denied. But I take solace in knowing, I take solace in knowing you will fight for a more prosperous global black community and secure what is right for ours through reparations and the unification of the black race. Thank you.